So hello everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to <laughs> this very last session in the DevConf. Uh, my name is Daiki Ueno. I work for Red Hat at the Rail uh, Crypto team, like uh, Simo. Uh, so, so title of this talk is a uh, question: uh, our, our systems using up-to-date cryptography. So today I'm going to talk about a tool we are currently de developing to give you some answer to this question. That is to monitor the cryptography usage on a system. They could speak a bit louder. OK. <laughs> so I don't have a strong voice. So <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So here is a motivation. So it's no doubt that uh, cryptography is uh, everywhere. And uh, yeah, but uh, every, there is a problem that uh, every cryptographic Algorithms have uh, has any has, has uh, its own lifetime, so it will be eventually vulnerable. So, for example, triple death and MD5 are already known to be vulnerable for quite some time, and uh, it turned out recently that the SHA-1 can be yeah, uh, can be uh, can make a collision with uh, uh, moderately priced computers. And uh, yeah, it is also said that there will be quantum computers are coming, and uh, it will, they will break existing uh, asymmetric cryptography, like ECDSA, RSA, something like that. So the best practice is to regularly review your system configuration and uh, update, uh, if needed, to use the newer crypto algorithms. Yeah, but it's not that easy because, uh, yeah, if you suddenly stop uh, supporting some particular algorithms, and, and there might be some users are still using, so they will be probably upset. And if you are providing public services, maybe <laughs> they, you will lose customers or users. So that is bad. So the first thing you do need to do is to identify how much the algorithm set is used in the world. So to identify the cryptography usage on a system, we came up with a simple idea that is to modify the system crypto libraries with some instrumentation called USDT and attach the BPF program to each uh, user space program and uh, monitor the uh, capture algorithm usage and generate some statistics. So we have uh, a couple of case studies in the past. So one is uh, DevConf 2020 presentation by Simo that is to gather statistics of TLS cipher suites usage. The next one is uh, uh, Shawan Sig Tracer tool created by Alex to check the feasibility of duplicate, uh, duplicating the SHA-1 algorithm in Fedora. The change itself was eventually rejected, but uh, it was proven that this tool was useful. So, so the idea is that uh, we are making this tool more generic. So, yeah. so there are many challenges, actually, so to make it generic. So the so main uh, concerns I listed here are three things. One is efficiency. So it's not zero cost to attach uh, eBPF program and monitor some things. But uh, we shouldn't affect the entire system performance. So yeah, it shouldn't be unusable. And also, in theory, uh, we can collect any information from any user space program, but uh, we shouldn't collect too much. So we shouldn't collect uh, users' private activity or yeah, something like that. And uh, the last thing is uh, maintainability. Uh, we are modifying the upstream cryptographic libraries. So there will be some burden to maintain if you, if you add uh, trace points or something like that. So we need to make it minimal cost to maintain it. So 
Yeah, to address these three challenges, we are designed, we designed architecture and the logging mechanism. So here is the architecture diagram. Uh, basically, it consists of three components. I don't know. So agent and uh, event broker and some clients attached. So agent is uh, just installs BPF program into the kernel. And uh, this BPF program is uh, attached to each target program. And uh, it receives some events and send, it sends it back to agent. And the agent just uh, writes them into a disk file. And uh, there is a separate event broker process that can monitor this primary log file and uh, distribute events to the subscribed clients. Then finally, the final uh, statistics can be used by any clients. Okay. So <laughs> this is the text description of my, what I say. So let's move on to the login format. Um, so <laughs> yeah, uh, usually cryptographic event have any, some context attached because uh, for example, yeah, in this case, uh, sometimes signature as an algorithm, RSA, PSS, is used. But where, when, for what purpose this is used is uh, unclear if we just record these events. So we make it structure like a hierarchical manner. But basically, there is a prior out. Uh, we just follow the pattern using distributed tracing. So we categorize uh, event types in two. One is context. Context means a period of, the period of time where events or any other context can occur. And uh, the other is event. It's just an event. Yeah, it represents the event itself. So context is, as I said, it is uh, just a period of time. It's just a container. But uh, it can have uh, some name associated. Also, it is uh, identified with a uh, 16 bytes identifier. So it is tend to be a uh, private information. So it is uh, obfuscated by the agent when it is received. So for TLS, we defined some set of uh, context names, like uh, uh, TLS handshake for client and TLS handshake for server, and certificate signing for certificate-based authentication, and also key exchange. Yeah, you know, TLS handshake uh, consists of multiple phrases. So yeah, it corresponds to it. OK. So the event, event, just, uh, event is just a key value pair. Uh, that uh, represents a single event data. So for example, protocol version is encoded as a uint16 uh, value. That uh, means a negotiated TLS version. And TLS cipher suites as well, a signature algorithm, key exchange algorithm, and group. So there are more, but uh, I just uh, show so, and uh, conceptually, these contexts and the events are basically looks like a tree, but uh, yeah, we need to encode them because uh, otherwise we can't write it in a file. So we choose this representation uh, using the four primitives. One is a new context that just introduce another context from the parent. And the three event data, they are just a key value pair. So, and with different types, word and string and blob. So, for example, if we encode these events, so handshake client with context ID 00 to 01, with this event, protocol version 0304, and also another context with 00 to 02 with two child events. Yeah, so this is kind of 
a tree, and it can be encoded into this way. So context is opened, and uh, this string event is emitted. This is uh, just assigning the name to the context. It is handshake client. And we have a protocol version event. And uh, another context is opened. And name is assigned. Yeah, and uh, two other events are encoded. So it's, as you know, <laughs> as you see, it's two barbers. So we implement some optimization. So 16 bytes is uh, too much, basically. <laughs> it costs a lot of uh, disk space. Yeah. So if we just save the file in this format, yeah, it eat up your disk space. <laughs> so we, uh, we uh, apply some uh, grouping mechanism. That is to make uh, multiple event into a single event entry. So it will uh, yeah, make it much smaller. And also we implemented log rotation mechanism. So if the primary log file reaches the limit, we, uh, the system already automatically uh, create a backup file and open a new file. So that was a login format. And uh, so we need to modify the crypto library to yeah, instrument the same information. And uh, we provide this helper macros. Yeah, it's uh, exactly matches the uh, four primitives we provide. So yeah, I'm not sure if it meets the challenges, but uh, we, tried, we, are, we tried. And uh, for efficiency, uh, it is uh, addressed by simple design of agent. It simply, simply just uh, writes a file. It doesn't, doesn't do anything, as a, any other thing. And uh, events are grouped, so written data will be uh, enjoyed to be small. And, uh, for privacy, we only added this mechanism that is to uh, uh, encrypt and obfuscate the context ID. And maintainability, so yeah, we, as you see, uh, events are described with only four generic uh, proof interface. So it should be uh, easy to use in the e both crypto library and also the agent side. So let me show some demo. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it works with the network. Do you see? Well, OK. So as I said, um, there are two demos installed and, uh, installed and running. This is the uh, agent. It's running on the system. And uh, this is uh, also event broker. It's working. Um, uh, let's start the client and uh, try to use TLS. Oh, sorry. I didn't start it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. So, more interesting. Example is uh, just using a uh, geo uh, application, for example, maps. So, actually, I'm living here, <laughs> around here. <laughs> but, uh, for example, Bruno, as you see, uh, there are some interaction that is uh, basically new TLS connection is created, and some uh, information is also captured. So let's save it into a binary file. So, yeah. Maybe we can do that again. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It 
should have captured some events. So let's use the log parser UTP. So the events are now rendered as a tree. So context has events and uh, it has some child spans, new context, and also it has uh, child events. So yeah, it can be rendered like this in a tree format. So we can generate a frame graph like uh, bench, uh, like uh, power math tools. So with this script, so so data is uh, written to HTML. Let's open it. So there are multiple TLS handshake happened, and uh, all the information you can browse with the uh, HTML. Yeah. And uh, you can also import it to Grafana or any other visualization platform. So I created a dashboard for this. So yeah, this is the same. Uh, same frame, yeah, frame graph, and also you can count the actual TLS ciphers it's used with a simple uh, SQL. So you can just write something like that. Okay. So yeah, that's it for the demo. So for the implementation, so we recently started uh, GitHub repository, yeah, it's all public and uh, core components are written in Rust, and uh, most of them are written in async style for perform performance reasons, and uh, yeah, for BPF access we use uh, libbpfrs. There are multiple implementation of BPF, but uh, yeah, I, we choose it, and uh, event broker uses uh, tarpc crate for binary based RPC. And uh, other scripts are written in Python. And we also provide a couple of utilities to access the logs and event broker. So, yeah, we need to also modify the crypt libraries. So, we have an experimental package with uh, this uh, instrumentation in my corporate repository. So, Clemens already created OpenSSL, I created Vinitiris. So they can be safely installed, but uh, be careful about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so future work. Um, so we eventually move this uh, instrumentation to upstream for yeah further use cases. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we also after that we also plan to implement something in the higher level programming languages like Go and Rust. Yeah, lastly, we want, to we want to support more protocols like SSH, IPsec, DNSSEC, um, PGP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, other things, or other things. Uh, the Grafana data source is currently just a uh, batch analysis. But we can also create a plugin to support a real-time analysis. Also, event broker is uh, currently not socket activatable. It's just a restriction in the plate, uh, dependent plate, but we can make it uh, socket activatable, so it is not always uh, running on the system. So, I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe it's ended earlier, but uh, the conclusion is that our new project, it's called Crypto Auditing, aims to create an infrastructure, infrastructure needed to monitor the crypto usage on a system. So we are trying to make it uh, usable and generic. And uh, the architecture of the project has been presented, which comprise, comprises agent and event broker and clients. Also, log format was uh, presented. So that's it. Any questions? <coughs> yes. Uh, uh, my, my, my question is, uh, 
I saw uh, the COPPA uh, repository yeah. for this uh, program. You have a plan to, to create official RPM package for this program. So the question is that we have, we currently have only Copra, but uh, whether we have a plan to create an official package. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that is the goal. But uh, yeah, we probably should should be upstream first. So if the upstream accepts, we can make it official. Yeah. So that is the plan. So. Yes. How? How significant this uh, performance slow down if you measured it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had the numbers, but uh, I forgot. <laughs> but, uh, Please repeat the question. Ah, so, yes, yes. So the question was uh, how much uh, performance overhead we would have if this is enabled. Um, I think we had some numbers, but I, I forgot. But uh, it was, I think, around uh, 20% or something if uh, we are actively monitoring everything. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we need to reevaluate re afterwards. Yeah. Yes? So I understood correctly, if you want to monitor all the grid, like the original goal was to monitor all the grid dots that you are running in your system so that you know, like, the mechanics venturing is going to be using up to the grid job. But the, the requirement here is that you must be able to instrument Yeah, the question is that, uh, yeah, so if we uh, monitor all the crypto primitives, we need to instrument all the crypto libraries and uh, also the copied code. So that is correct, and that is uh, in particular a problem with uh, some Golang or Rust uh, ecosystem. They are using static uh, linking. So yes, that's true, and uh, yeah, we currently focus on shared library and uh, most frequently used, but uh, yeah, we'll probably find some way to yeah, <laughs> uh, address the static li linking situation. Yeah. Yes. Administrator will modify, modify, or update. Right? So I might uh, not understand your question, but uh, if we, the question is that, uh, yeah. Ah, so, ah, sorry, but my question is if yeah. uh, yes. uh, administrators yeah. uh, want to monitor some different uh, criteria mm -hmm. of the encryptions in the system. They need to update the config file of the application. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So the question that uh, so if the existing user is uh, configured the, your system with FIPS 140-2, and uh, yeah. they eventually migrate to 1-3, yeah. and uh, yeah, whether it is needed to change the configuration. Yeah. But it depends on the components, right? And uh, also the, how the 140-3 is enforced. So yeah. So I think that that kind of enforcement is done by crypto policies, yeah, system-wide crypto policies in Fedora in this case. So this is just a monitoring and uh, give you a hint of uh, how many. Case, yeah. Yeah. Another component yeah. manages the change of the encryption requirement. So, so your crypto auditing system does not need to manage the change of the encryption, right? Yeah, that's okay. correct. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, we can.